Hi. Good evening, everyone. Sorry, Hope uh, everyone is fine. So in this session, we are just going to discuss about automotive BW fixer design. So what are the basic constraints? How we can able to design a fixer? So what are the different components available? So that we are going to discuss in detail. So let me share my screen. I hope my screen is visible for everyone. So you guys yes, uh, okay, can, yeah. So guys, any idea regarding what is BW and what is fixer design? If you guys know what is BW, you can just type it in the chat box. What is BW? Anyone hear the term BIW, body in weight? I think they are uh, writing uh, to me uh, uh, the okay. answer. So guys, uh, you know, uh, actually they, you, whenever you are typing the message, uh, there is an option, right? The Where you can select the name of the person to whom you want to chat with. So uh, right above the message space, there is a blue background thing, right? You, there is a drop down feature. If you click on that, you can select the name. You can see two names only, Murli Shankar and Mehul. So how about you select the Murli Shankar's name because he is the uh, technical expert going to deliver the technical session. So if he's asking any question, it would be great if you are answering it directly to him so that he gets the visibility. Okay. So here a couple of folks have answered body in white Shankar. So we can, you know, uh, take it from here. Yeah. Okay. So thank you. So what is body in white? Any ideas? So if you consider automobile, so majorly we are building the car body with the help of two things. One is body on frame, another one will be uh, monocue, or we can tell it's just body in white. Body in white means, so if you consider old technology, what we are going to do, we will be having a chassis, which all the components have been attached, over which we are going to build the core body. So it will be having more structural rigidity. And But if you compare that, what will, what will be the main concern over there? Any ideas? What will be the concern if you are going with the building uh, body over the chassis? The weight of the uh, uh, automotive part will be heavier, right? So we want to, if you consider like passenger cars, which is not going to carry much loads. So what we can do, we can just try to reduce the weight so we can able to improve the efficiency of the car, fuel efficiency of the car, right? So uh, BW is a technique in which, so we'll be building the entire uh, car body with the help of the uh, different uh, components, welded structures. So we'll be having seat metal components, which are welded together to form the vehicle structure. Clear guys? Any doubt? Uh, so did you got any basic idea? What is BW? So it is a stage of an automobile where we are going to weld different seat metal components together to form the vehicle main frame structure. Clear guys? So it is the stage after welding and uh, before painting process. Clear case? Any doubt in this? So I will repeat the thing. So we have two technologies. One is body on frame, where we will be having the chassis. Chassis means we will be having a frame in which all the systems like suspension systems, engine compartment, everything will be attached to that. Okay. Over which we are going to build the car body, exterior of it. Okay. So another method, what we are going to do, we are going to have the frame uh, we, we are going to have different seat metal components welded together to form the vehicle structure okay over this vehicle structure we are going to attach all the other components so what will be the advantage it will be having seat metal component which is having lesser weight so if we have lesser weight what will what be the advantage we can able to uh, increase the fuel efficiency we can able to get good, good mileage because of the lesser weight correct so next one what are the different bw components any idea so what are the different BW components? Any ideas? What are the different components available in BW? You guys can type in the chat box, which part you have know, which you know. Most of the, not all the course, most of the course we are uh, going with BW concept only. So anyone know what are the different components available in BW? 
perfect guys perfect so we can just discuss what are the different components available so in B, uh, bw we are majorly divided into subcategories as body sides body side will be having body side outer and body side inner similarly we have under body under body means bottom bottom portion of the car where we'll be having the floor surface where we will be having engine compartment main floor surface and rear compartment rear will be the rear side portion of the car and we'll be having closers closer means we'll be having closer compartments which will be having option to open or close it as per the requirement so you'll be having put we will be having front doors side doors back doors which are coming under closer compartments then we are having roof so if you consider roof we will be having roof outer panel roof inner panel uh, uh, required reinforcements like uh, bow roof rails rear roof rails kind of it okay and we'll be having fenders so these are the different components of bw next any idea about fixer what is fixer why we need a fixer so you can type the answers in the chat box so any idea about fixer We will, uh, where we can find the annotations option. Sorry. Uh, so I can't able to find annotation option over here. Can't able to find? Annotations. <laughs> so okay guys consider uh, we are having two uh, seats seat belt components we are going to join that using any joining process consider i'm going to do spot welding so how i can what are the things i need to consider for doing for joining that process for joining process you can uh you guys can answer so consider i'm going to do spot, spot welding for two seat metal components how i can able to perform what are the things i need to consider for doing the spot welding process so what are the things I need to consider? So if I'm going to do spot welding, first I want to hold the component, right? How I can hold the component? Um, Murli, uh, how about we use a whiteboard uh, like 
you know, if you click on share button, uh, you will okay. be able to present the whiteboard and you can, you know, annotate there. Yeah, okay, swear. Yeah. So, my screen is visible for everyone? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Guys, considered I will be having two seat metal components. I am going to do spot welding over this region. So, what are the things I need to consider before performing the operation? Please excuse for the geometry. So, I will be having two seat metal components, one and two. So, here I am going to do spot welding over this region. So, what are the things I want to consider before? Doing the spot welding or any joining process. So, if I'm going to do welding process, what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I will make ensure, I will ensure that this components are hold in position. Then only I can able to do spot welding, right? So, you guys will be using checks or C clamps or something, right? For holding the component in place. Right, guys? So we'll be holding the component in place to arrest the degrees of freedom. And then we can we can able to perform the spot welding. So consider I am using clamping with the help of C clamps, or I will be using sex or uh, some other thing. What will happen? So it will not give the it will not have the much accuracies. And if I consider MOS production, it will be time consuming process. Every time I need to hold it and I holding and unloading time will be larger for it. Because of that, what will happen? The processing time for the particular process can be very high. So I want to bring it down. How I can reduce it? Any idea? So how I can bring the process time come? So I will be having a fixer. So what is a fixer? Fixer is a component which holds the component which holds the work piece that is to be processed. Either it can be joining, either any of the joining process. Either it can be welding or it can be gluing or we are going to apply for fasteners or we are going to do riveting operation. So fixer is a device which will be holding the work piece to be processed. Either it, uh, so we can use a lot of joining process which can be welding, glue, applying glue or uh, applying uh, adding fasteners or we are going to do riveting or we want to check the inspect the particular component. So is that you guys have any idea about jigs and fixers? What is jigs and fixers? What is the difference between both? So you can just type in the chat box. So in the chat box, you can just uh, type what is jigs and fixers? And what is the difference between both of it? Yeah, yeah right, guys. But there is some additional points. So any other have I any idea? What is jigs and fixers? What is the difference between both of it? Six and fixers both are used to hold the component, but there is a slight difference. So jig and uh, fixers are used to hold the uh, workpiece in a place, but jigs will be guiding the tool as well. But fixers, jigs is used to hold the component as well as it will guide the tool. So any of the examples for jigs, where we are mostly using jigs. So consider we are going to perform any drilling or boring operations. Okay, so what we can do? So we will be holding the plate in place and we are going to, so fix uh, jig will be uh, guiding the tool where I want to place the drill bit, bit, correct? So where I'm going to perform the drilling bit, it will be guiding the tool also along with it. But if you consider fixer, fixer is just 
holding the component. It is not guiding the tool. So if you consider uh, complex operations like milling or any other operations where it is having complex uh, geometry. So we, are, we, are, we can't be able to guide the tool as well. So that is the reason why we are using fixers for complex thing. And what is the advantage of having fixer? Any idea? How you can improve the accuracy of the machine component? And we want to have the, if you consider MOS production or batch production, we want to have repeatability. Every time we need to have the same accuracy, correct? So how we can able to achieve that? Any idea? How we can reduce? Uh, by arresting degrees of freedom, perfect. So how we are going to hold the component in place? What are the main perfect? By using three to one principle. So fixer will be considered with respect to three to one principle, correct? So fixer is a single component or it is having multiple components assembled together. The accuracy achieved during a machining process depends upon the precision with which the tool is placed to precision of the tool as well as the workpiece, how it is mounted in the machining process, correct? So the accuracy of the component is based on two factors, how we are, how precision we are going to place the tool as well as the workpiece. So if you consider a manual process, what will happen? It is time consuming and it is not having repeatability. We, every time we can't able to place the panel manually at the correct place. So we are having a unit called as fixers where we will be having the entire setup ready in a proper time. And every time when you load the load or unload the panel, it will be loading in the same place and it will be having repeatability option. It will be having more accuracy as well. Clear guys? So what are the different advantages and what are the major things we want to consider in a fixers? How the fixers are used? We can able to use multiple tools as well. So how, what are the different factors you need to consider in fixers? So is my screen visible guys for everyone? I hope for everyone it is visible. So we'll be having locating elements. So I want to locate a component in place. So I'll be having a locating element. Where I want to hold the component. Correct. So next one, what I'm going to do, I'm going to clamp the unit in place. So clamping is the second factor, which I'm going to consider. Then what is the other things? Why I'm performing the operation? It need to resist the tooling forces, resistance to tooling forces. Again, it need to provide safety to the workers who is handling it, safety aspects. And then it need to provide support, required support and rigidity. So, you guys understand what is the purpose of locating element? I want to hold this particular root piece in place. So what I want to do, I want to locate the panel in the correct position. So I can able to perform the spot welding at the required place, clear? Locating can be done with the help of pins or clamps, correct? What is purpose of clamping to hold the competent work piece? So how the clamping need to be? Clamping need to be light, if it is very hot, what will happen? It will create, consider I will be having a panel. If I am clamping it too hot, what will happen? It will try to create damage to the particular panel. It can be kind of, it can bend the panel or it can create a duct 
or it can deform. It can be any of the deformation. So the clamping need to be very light. So resistant. So it need to resist all the tooling to forces. It should be strong enough to resist all the tooling forces. If you consider safety, it need to provide safety concerns for the workers. Who is going to, going to handle that? Any doubt in this? Any doubt till now? So it need to provide the required support and rigidity to the component. Clear guys? So why we are going to use fixers? What is the purpose of fixers? And then while I'm going to clamp it, what, what should be the considerations? It should be free from all other components. There should not be any adherence to the other nearby components. Clear guys? So next thing. So what are the different types of fixtures available? Mainly it is classified into three types. One is production fixtures, another one is pre-production fixtures or operation fixtures, and another one will be checking fixtures. So anyone know what is production fixtures? What is production fixtures? You just can type in a chat box. So it is used for welding. So anyone have any idea what is production fixers? So here itself we can able to find. So we are going to do MOS production. So if you are going for MOS production, what will be prefer for? Consider I will be having it. I am going to, yeah, perfect. It is one of the key points. So, So what is production fixes or MOS production purpose? So production fixes are mainly used for MOS production purpose. So if you consider a core assembly, so what you will do? You'll be having different units, correct? So this, those different, different components need to be assembled. So we'll be having an assembly line where we are going to assemble multiple components together, correct? So if you are going to, uh, if you consider assembly line, so we'll be having different models and we need to have the possibility of assembling all the components together in a place. So anyone have idea about assembly lines where the core, uh, core products or core panels is getting assembled together? Yeah, please. So can you just explain in detail? So. So consider I'm going to assemble a core together. So what I will do, I will be having an assembly line where we will be having a sequence of process. First, I want to assemble. Perfect. So we will be having different components. So if you consider uh, the hood design, so hood will be having multiple components. Like just a minute, I will just share my screen. I hope my screen is visible for everyone. Consider hood. Hood will be having multiple components together. So I will be having a zone. So it is closer, would be coming under closer compartment, right? So closer compartment is my zone. I will be having station, which is hood design. Hood is one of the component. So I will be having sub components, right? So hood, if you consider hood, hood will be having outer panel. It will be having inner panel. I will be having latch and striker. I will be having hints. I will be having hints. Okay. I will be having reinforcements. So these are the different components. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to weld this inner panel with a reinforcement. I will be having the inner panel. I'm going to weld those with the reinforcement. So I'll be having an assembly line where I will be having hood in, a hood in a panel placed and I will be having reinforcements. So first process, I will be welding one of the reinforcement. Second, I will be welding the other reinforcement kind of it. Okay, clear. Next, what I will be doing? I will be going to join the outer panel in the panel together. So this is first process. Second process is joining outer panel in a panel together. 
outer and inner panels are going to get joined together. Next, I'm going to place the latch. I'm going to place the hinge in position. So I will be placing the hinge. Next, I'm going to place the striker in, latch and striker in position. So this is the order where we are going to have it assembled done. Then what will happen? We will be having the main place where it is going to the zone. In zone, what will be having? We'll be having hood, we will be having the engine compartment. So over engine compartment, I'm going to place the hood design. So that will be taking place. Clear? So MOS production fixer, where I'm going to perform oh, in a batch production, I will be having 1000 parts or 10,000 parts. I'm going to do the same thing. So what I will be having, I will be having the components, everything, uh, tools, everything ready in order. So what I'm going to do, you, you can be able to perform a lot of operations at the same time. So I'll be holding a component. I'm going to do 1000 spot welds at the same time for a particular component. And it will be repeated for a number of components. It can be 10,000 or it can be a lakh. So pre-production fixers or initial stage fix, initial stage batch production, or we can just tell it as prototype model. So while we are developing a prototype model, what do you do? Yeah, perfect. We are having beta models or we can just tell the prototype model. If you are going to develop one prototype model, we don't have the standard assembly, everything ready, correct? So it is the first process. We are going to develop a new product. So for that, we will be having initial setups ready. So here, if it is uh, production fixers, Mostly it will be like automated process. But if you consider pre-production fixers, most of the process will be coming under manual operations. So you'll be having manual labors who will be checking the particular inspections. And most of the operations will be manual. So this is what, what prototype model. So once you develop prototype model, from that we can able to find out what are the issues we are facing here. Based on the issues, we are going to update the final ones, which can be opted for the pro production fixers. So it is the pre-stage of it is the initial stage for production process. Then checking fixers. Any idea regarding checking fixers? Anyone have any idea about checking fixers? So name itself telling it is going to inspect the particular component. I'm going, I will be having a CAD model. So I'm going to inspect whether everything is designed as per the requirement or not. So what any example for checking fixers? So everyone may hear the term called as CMM, right? Coordinate measuring machine. Anyone, everyone have idea? What is CMM? Anyone heard the term CMM? Coordinate measuring machine. Perfect, right? What it will do? So we will be giving the CAD model. So what will we, what the CMM will do? CMM will measure the as per the CAD data, it will be it will be comparing the design, whether it is as per the CAD model or there is some changes. So if it is within the tolerance range, you will be accepting it. So anyone have everyone have idea right tolerances right? So we'll be having some become table to manufacture the product with the same accuracy. Okay, so we'll be having some tolerances added. Up. So with the checking fixes, it will be checking what is the as per the CAD model, what is the deviation we are having, it, whether it is within the tolerance acceptable range or not, that we are going to check with checking fixes. We are going to uh, see each and everything in detail. Okay, so this is the BAW assembly line. For assembly line, we'll be having different components. So we have different things named as tools or grippers. Tools are the things which is going to mess up the particular thing. Grippers are used to handle the components. Clear case? So we are going to check, uh, see each and everything in detail. So if you consider uh, BW tool systems, first one is we consider as geo tool. What is geo tool? Geo tool is a fixer in which geometry of the panel, which are going to be welded is defined accurately. Where I'm going to place the panel, the, I will be placing the panel and I'm going to inspect the entire geometry of the panel, okay? So the tolerance for the geo pin tool will be 0.15 mm, clear? So consider I will be having a panel which is having diameter of 25 mm. So for geo tool, what will be that? Uh, what should be the acceptable tolerance level? Anyone? I will be having a pin which is having diameter. I will be having a hole which is having diameter of 25 mm. And for geo spot tool, there is a tolerance of 0.15 mm. So what can be the what can be the acceptable tolerance level? Minimum. I need to design it for 25 mm only, but in some cases, there is some 
cons, uh, tolerance uh, level, right? We will be having tolerances. So what can be the diameter is 25 mm, clear guys? I will be having tolerance which is acceptable until 0.15 mm. So what I will do, what is the acceptable levels? Acceptable level. Perfect. So most of the guys have answered correctly. So it is 24.85. So maximum less 25 mm, diameter is 25 mm. In this, we will be having lesser tolerance of 0.15 mm. So we can accept this thing with, which is having value of 24.85 until 24.85 is acceptable level. And Geo's tool, what we, what we are going to do, and so I'm going to do spot welding. So how the geo tool will be used? So I will be having X, Y, Z coordinate. So consider I'm going to do spot welding over this region. So what I can do, I can just mention the coordinate values. So what will happen? My robotic arm will go to the respective place. There it is going to perform the spot welding at this region. Clear case? Is it clear? So geo station, which will be having tolerance of 0.15 mm. Next one, respotting tool. Respotting is the process in which, so consider I'm going to do spot welding in thousand places. I can't be able to spot welding at once in all the places, right? So consider I can be able to cover 60% of the spot welds in first process. So what will happen? I have hold the component, right? Now what I am going to do? I am going to hold it in a different place and I'm going to spot the, do the spot welding for the remaining process. So for that, what I can do? I can use respot tool. Wherever I can't able to do spot welding at the first instance, I can go for the respotting tool where I can able to perform the remaining spot welds. So it is like missing out parameters. So whatever I have missed out in the first operation, I can able to perform it in the second operation. So what is the tolerance value for second one? It is 0 0.18 mm. So consider I will be having a hold of diameter 25 mm. What should be the respotting tool minimum value? Consider diameter is 25 mm and I will be having tolerance of minus 0 0.28. So what's, what can be the minimum acceptable tolerance for respotting tool? Can you guys answer? Perfect case. So 25 minus the required tolerance value. So we can be able to accept till 24.72. If it is lesser than that, we, it, it is not under acceptable levels, we will be rejecting the particular component. Clear? Next one is hemming tool. So what is hemming? Anyone have any idea? Consider we'll be having two uh, exterior as well as interior components. So I want to join that together. So what I can do? I can use hemming process to join that. So hemming fixer, what I'm going to do? I'm going to do the hemming operation over this particular fixer. So I'll be holding the component. I'll be holding the outer panel and inner panel together. And I can be able to perform hemming in the regions where I'm going to do two hemming process. Clear guys? Hey, either you can do hemming or I can be able to do spot welding. So marriage means it is joining of two components. So we'll be having exterior component, interior component. Either it can be joined using spot welding or we can be able to join using hemming process. Clear? Next one, checking station. So as I already mentioned, what is the purpose of checking station? Checking uh, station is to inspect the particular component and as you ensures it is as per the uh, design or not. We will be having the CAD data, correct? So as per the CAD data, we are going to check the model, whether it is as per the model, model or we can just be able to sense the particular units, whether the particular unit is present at the particular location or not. Clear? So there will be different types of checking stations available. One will be gauge type, another one can be fixed type, automated checking uh, fixers, it will be kind of CMM only. So as I already mentioned, you guys have some idea about checking stations, clear, right? Next one, material grippers. What is a gripper? Gripper is a device uh, which will hold the core panel in a place and it is used to hold the component or it is used to transfer uh, one component from one place location to the other location, clear guys? So what is the difference between fixers and uh, gripper? Any idea? What is gripper? Gripper is also a part of fixer only, but in fixer, we'll be having large number of components. In gripper, we'll be just used to use it for material handling process. So what we'll, we'll be having, we'll be having lightweight materials like aluminum and we'll be having like square tubes. So which is used for transporting material from one place to another. Okay, so we'll be having different types of grippers. 
one is material handling repair what is material handling repair consider i am performed uh, an operation and I, i need to move that particular panel to the other component so what i can use i can use material handling repair material handling repair is used to do change uh, to uh, which help the robot take on to move the core panel from one station to other station so i i finish first operation so i want to move the core panel to the second of for second operation in the next station what i can do i can use material handling repair which will carry my component from one location and it transfer to the second location clear guys next one process gripper what is process gripper process gripper are used to do it will also carry from the station from one station to another station in the meanwhile what it can do while carrying we can able to perform some operations like welding riveting or gluing or sealing same case as previous one previous one we just transfer the uh component from one st one station to other station but in processing station while transferring we can able we can able to perform additional operations like while traveling itself while uh, we are moving uh, from one station to another during that time itself we can able to perform additional operations like welding we will be having welding guns where we can able to perform spot welding over this regions or we will be having riveting where it can perform riveting on the respective geo spots we will be having gluing or sealing purpose that's also possible next one combo gripper what is combo gripper so you'll be having different uh, so we'll, we can able to have multiple uh, things together one side i can able to have a gripper other time i will be having a welding gun so what i can do i can able to perform welding at certain operations as well one side it will be it will be having combination of both gripper as well as welding gun so if it is dual gripper it will be having dual uh, grippers at both the ends so you can able to see here right so consider i am going to assemble a car uh, car doors so i will be having car left side door and as well as right side door i want to assemble that both together at the same time so what i can do i can able to hold the component using dual gripper so i can hold one component on the left side and one component on the right side clear case so this can be used for dual gripper so any doubt in four of the grippers so i will be repeating one second metal handling gripper is used to move the component from one tooling station to other tooling station second one process gripper process gripper while uh, it, it is also used to transfer uh, handling the core panel from one pa one station to other station in the meanwhile while transferring itself it can able to perform some operations like welding riveting gluing or sealing any of the process can be done it is called as process gripper same thing combo gripper it will be having combination of uh, two or more components we can have gripper with weld gun we can have gripper with another components like sealing or gluing anything can be achieved with a combo gripper it is having combination of two or more so dual gripper it will be having gripper on both the sides so which can be able to assemble symmetrical parts together like doors tires okay so those things can be done using dual grippers next one design methodology so anyone have doubts till now can raise their questions in the chat box any doubts till now so if you consider design methodology of fixer there are majorly four categories one is releasing the purchase order second one inputs from the customer third one it can be percentage completion criteria and the fourth, fourth one will be the design output so what is purchase order so everyone may hear the term purchase order right what is purchase order guys you can just drop your answers in the chat box so what is purchase order if you are going to design a particular fixed unit you will be having majorly four requirements first one will be purchase order second one will be input from the customers what are the inputs we are going to get it that we are going to see in detail then percentage of completion so how much i have completed and then fourth one will be the design output so anything regarding but uh, purchase order to confirm that the specified work needs to be completed perfect so budget sanks saxon yeah it is out of it any other answers so what is purchase order so consider we are going to start any work and we are going to deliver the product 
we have signed for a we have signed an MU with a particular company. So we are going to do start the particular fixer unit. We are going to design the particular fixer unit. So what first first step? We need to get confirmation with the order and the number of quantity required. What are the different uh, criteria? I need to have it checked. Clear, guys? So purchase order is the order for the, from the customer to start the work, and we'll be having some certain agreements signed between the companies. Okay. Second one, inputs from the customer. What are the inputs required? So we'll be having funks. We'll be requiring the funks uh, further uh, inputs from the customer related to functional requirements. What is the functional requirement of the particular component? What is the preferred standards? Which standard I'm going to perform or follow? What are the different core products it is going to have it? What is the layout of the particular component? What is the ergonomics data for the particular component? What is the build study? How we, I'm going to perform the building? What is the different buildings I'm going to perform? So this thing need to have a detail. And then standard drawing temp detailing templates. So which format I am going to follow? What are the different parameters available over it? Clear? So can anyone give idea about consider I'm going to uh, design a car? Okay, and I'm going to manufacture it. So I have got the purchase order. Next, I'll be looking for the inputs from the customer. Okay. So what are the functional requirements you can you can expect? So what can be the uh, functional requirements for the fixer? What are the different types of fixers we have seen? So what are the different types of functional, what are the different types of fixers we have seen? Can you guys name any? Any idea? So what are the different types of fixers? Perfect. I'm going to do welding fixer. I can use check, uh, checking fixers. I can use hemming fixers. I can use storage racks kind of it. Okay. There are different types, right? So functional requirements include uh, either it is going to be welding fixer or it is going to be riveting fixers or it is going to checking fixers. Okay. So functional requirement will have this further subdividings accordingly. Okay. Next one, preferred standard components. So what is the standard I'm going to follow? So we have different standards called as ABB, NAMS, we have trunkers. So these are the different sites, okay? Where you'll be getting the standard data accordingly. So anyone know what is NAMS? NAMS, trunkers, ABB, any idea? So these are the different standards, perfect. Global standards, so these are some of it. Can you guys name any of the standards which you guys know? So regarding mechanical, we'll be having ISO standards, correct? So perfect. North American automotive metric standards. So we are going to follow those accordingly, okay? And trunkers are some of the things which will be related to cylinder, cylinders. So we'll be having set of standards related to cylinders. These are the preferred standards and we need to use standard components as possible. So in fixers design, our main focus is to use most standard components as possible. So can you guys name some of the standard components which you guys know? Which you come up with uh, our reg uh, regular day-to-day -day activities? Yeah, we can come up with some of the things like standard components. So fasteners, wherever you go, you can be able to get the standard components like fasteners, risers, 
clamps. If you consider the engine, we will be getting filler materials, right? Like bolts, nuts, whatever, correct? So these are the some of the standard components. So you want to prefer more with the standard components as possible. So what will, if you're going for standard components, what will be the advantage? We don't need to manufacture those separately and we can able to utilize the same product for multiple components, right? For multiple cores, we can able to use the same component as possible. So if you go with standard component, that is the advantage. Next one, core products. So can you name some of the con, uh, core products? What are the details required regarding the core products? What are the different components I'm going to have it? So how I'm going to manufacture those? So those details will be available in the core products. So which components I'm going to do in those, which components I'm going to outsource it. Those details can be available in the core products. Next one, layout. Layout means it will give the detailed description. What are the different uh, process I'm going to perform? It will be giving the sequence order accordingly. Next one, ergonomics data. What is ergonomics, any idea? Any idea regarding ergonomics? It will be not ergonomics. Actually, it will be regarding the human behavior. So how the human is going to work with the particular process. If any process, it will be involving human. So you need to have more effectiveness. So there should be a proper height for him to work with the comforters, correct? So which can reduce the time for work, which will reduce the time for setting the particular parameters. So we can just see the layouts. So this is some of the example for the product assembly process sheet. So in this, we'll be getting details like what are the different components I'm going to weld together. So at first, what I'm going to do, I'm going to weld these components together to form the particular sub-assembly. Then it will be moving to the next station. In next station, I'm going to perform some of the other operations. So these are the different components which I'm going to assemble together. Clearly, so this is the side body of the car. So you can see side body of the car will be having multiple components. So this process assembly sheet will give you a detail. Okay, which component I'm going to assemble with which one. Which one I need to start at the first. What is the sequence of the particular or, uh, or it'll be giving sequence uh, order. Or the particular thing. You guys can able to see it, right? Next one, this is ergonomics data. Ergonomics means study of the human behavior and the movements of the particular thing. How I am going to load the component. Or whether it is having safety standards. Clear? So what should be the average height of the person? Based on that, we will be deciding the factors. So what it will do, it will increase the effectiveness of the worker who is going to handle the particular fixers. So we have certain heights. So as you consider the average height of the human, it will be around 150 centimeter, right? So there should not be any object more than 150 or 160 uh, centimeter. So if it is above 150 centimeter, what will happen? It will be difficult for the person to handle it. So we need to consider the height between 950 mm or 1000 mm to 1500 mm. So it should be the working range. We'll be having different components. So what is the dimension for each component? They have mentioned it over here. Ergonomics data will give the detailed idea about how the human is going to, human behavior of the particular component, it need to be more comfortable for the student, uh, for the employee to work with it, which can increase the product, which can decrease the product lead time, and we can increase the effectiveness of the worker. So next one, weld matrix or weld points. So consider, we will talk about zero points, right? So consider I'm going to do spot welding over this region. So I'll be having green color as well as red color, right? So the red colors are my geo spots, okay? Where I go, where it is going to perform spot welding at first at this particular red points. So I can't be able to spot uh, do spot welding for all the locations at the same point, right? Because I want to hold the component at some place. So what I will be doing, the re spot welds are the green places where I can be able to make the pins or clamps available over there. With respect to that, what I can do? So I will be clamping over this particular regions and I can able to do spot welding over the red spots. Red regions where I can able to spot welding at the first. After completing that, what I can do? I can move the clamps to the other position and I can able to do use re-spotting weld to spot the green spots. Clear guys, any doubt in this till now? Next, percentage of completion. So based on the, if, you, if it is considered with fixers, so we will be having general criteria. So if you consider 
input as well as concept design of the particular model. So we have completed around 25 percentage of the work. So if it is, if you have concept approval, once the concept is approved and we start working on the design and we'll be having the simulation trends. After that, what will happen? There will be feedback from the simulation. So consider I will be designing a car. So I will be having certain factors. Okay, so I will be getting feedback from the analysis team. So I will be reworking on the design decision changes. I will be making the changes to the design. Next, what I will be doing? I will be again doing the simulation. So until it gets satisfied, we will be this process is repeatable. Okay, so once the design simulation everything is perfect, so we will be I will be freezing the model. If I am freezing the model, I will be having a stage of forty to eighty five percent of the work is done. So if the design is freezed, around forty percent of the work is completed. And if the two D detailing is done. 2D detailing means we'll be drafting the particular model. We'll be giving the final design as well as the dimensions for sorting the manufacturing process. So if it is done, we will have around 85% of the process completed. And finally, it will be like, uh, we'll be checking the, we'll be doing inspection as well as the final dispatch. So that will be the final process, which is about 85 to 100%. Next one, what is the design output? Design outputs can be 3D models or it can be like 2D drawings. So if it is having two things, one is unitized tools and one is non-unitized tool. If it is unitized, we can be able to perform, we will be having multiple units in the same. So consider we will be having a fixer. Fixer will be having multiple units, like pin unit, clamp unit, rest unit, base unit kind of it. Okay, so we'll be having multiple units, then it is called as unitized tool. So in unitized tool, we'll be having two main parameters. One is key seat. Key seat will give you an idea about what are the different units available and where it is located. So, and we'll be having layout sheet. Layout sheet will give detailed description about what are the different components available and the individual subunits and what is the function of each and everything. So, key, key, out, key layout will give an idea about what are the different units available and where it is located. But layout will give a detailed description about its 2D drawings, about individual components, individual subassemblies, and all the requirements. So, it will be giving a very detailed layer. Layout will be giving the very detailed. So if it is non-utilized tool, this is not part of a fixer. It will be having like standalone units. It is a separate unit, which is used for only for certain operations. So if we have a drilling, if you consider as drilling, it is a standalone uh, tool. So we can able to perform only drilling. But if it is unitized tool, we can able to perform multiple operations like milling, surface grinding, any operation can be done with a single. We will be having multiple tools assembled together. If it is unitized, it will be a single tool. Clear? Next one, we already seen about fixers, right? Can anyone tell how many degrees of freedom is available? We already explained what is fixer, right? So how many degrees of freedom is available for a particular component? I will be having a particular product. So how many degrees of freedom is available? Is it six or double? Okay, so what are those six degrees of freedom? Okay, so how many axis, uh, how many coordinates are there? So we'll be having three coordinates, right? X, Y, and DZ axis. Clear guys? So how many translation motions can be possible? So I'll be having a component for this. How many translation motions are possible? So we have three axis system, X, Y, and DZ, correct? In each axis, we'll be having a possibility whether I can have positive x or I can have negative x, correct? So for one direction, we'll be having translation motion forward or backward. If it is positive, it is moving forward. If it is backward, it will be negative, correct? So how many degrees of freedom, how many translation movement is available for one axis? It is two, positive x, negative x. Similarly, positive y, negative y axis. Similarly, positive widget, negative widget. So totally, we have six translation motions. Clear? So how many is only six or we have any rotational movement also possible? So only translation is possible or we can have rotation also. So the component can be able to move in clock about x-axis, either in clockwise direction or counterclockwise. Correct. So for each axis, we'll be having two rotational movement. So totally, we may have six 
rotational movement as well. So now you guys have better idea, right? So you guys can able to see. So how many degrees of freedom is available for a particular component? We may have three trans, uh, six transition motion, which is about three axis x, y, and z, positive x, negative x, positive y, negative y, positive z, negative z. So six transition motion is possible. Similarly, we can have six rotational movement, clockwise rotation about x axis, clockwise rotation about y axis, clockwise rotation about z axis. Similarly. Counterclockwise rotation about x axis, y, and z. Similarly, totally we have 12 degrees of freedom. Okay, so how we are going to how we are going to work with the fixers? We will be going to do it with respect to the 3 to 1 principle. Can anyone know about 3 to 1 principle? Any idea regarding 3 to 1 principle? So three to one principle give an idea how we are going to, so totally we have 12 degrees of freedom, right? So if I'm going to perform some operation, what I want to do, I want to arrest those degrees of freedom. How I am going to arrest, what are the different things I'm going to do it to arrest the degrees of freedom that is going to be explained in the next slide. So this is the three to one principle. Consider I'll be having a core panel, okay? So I want to, totally we have 12 degrees of freedom. How, how I'm going to arrest 12 degrees of freedom? That is the thing. So consider I will be having three principal locators. So which is mentioned here, right? So if I have three principal locators, what will happen? My component will can't be able to move in the downward direction. Clear guys? So if I have three, only the three blocks. So what will be happening? So I need to place the principal locators in the way, in such a way. So I'll be placing it at three corners. Clear guys? So the principal locators will be placed in the majority of the surface, okay? So if I have the uh, thing, what will happen? I can't able to move the panel downward, correct? So I will just uh, go to the whiteboard and I will. So instead, I will be having a panel like this. So I will be placing a three principal locators. So I will be changing the color. So I will be placing one here. I will be placing another principal locator over here. I will be placing another principal locator over here. At the bottom. So if I have it, can I able to move my panel downward? Is it possible, guys? Is it possible for me to move my panel downward? No. So in Y direction, downward, it is not possible. So here I have placed three principal locators. Can, can I able to rotate my panel with respect to X axis? So consider this is X axis. Is it possible? Can I able to rotate the panel in this particular direction? Will it be allowed? So I can't able to move the panel at the bottom. It will be restricting the thing, correct? Similarly, I can't able to 
rotate the tilt the panel in each direction. So what is happening? So it is arresting one translation motion and four rotational rows. Correct? Four rotational moment is getting arrested. Clear, guys? Next, what I'm going to do? I will be having one code. Here I'm going to place a pin. If I place a pin, what will happen? Can I able to move the pin in? Can I able to move the panel in translation about x axis? Can I able to move the panel? Is it possible? Similarly, can I able to move the panel about y axis? Is it possible? So if I have one hole, I can't able to move the panel in translation along x direction in post forward or uh, backward. Similar case for y. But what happened? I can able to rotate my panel with respect to y axis. That is possible. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to have one more hole. Here I'm going to place one more pin. So if I have one more pin over here, can I able to rotate in y, y direction? Is it possible? So make sure, guys. So I'll be explaining one second. So I'll be having a core panel. OK. We can have slot or we can have holes. So most probably, we'll be going for one side. We can have hole. Other side, we can have slots. That is also possible for most of the cases. So I'll be having a core panel. I will be having two holes. So for locating the component in a place. So I, what I am doing, first I'll be placing three principal locators at the bottom of this particular panel. So at the bottom of this, I have placed it, correct? So can I able to move the panel downward? Is it possible? So I can't able to move the panel translation about Y axis. So the bot downward movement has been arrested. So I'll be having three principal locators. If I place three principal locators, so I'll be having three blocks. Three blocks will be placed at the bottom of the panel. What is doing? It is arresting one translation movement about Y axis. And can I able to read the panel about X axis? Is it possible? So we'll be having a blocks at this particular position. So I can't able to tilt the panel downward. So what is doing? It is arresting rotational movement about X axis. Similarly, I can't able to move the panel in this particular Z axis as well. Okay. So it is arresting four rotational movement as well as single translational movement about Y axis. So the three blocks I can able to arrest. How many degrees of freedom? Five degrees of freedom is arrested. Clear? So remaining how many degrees of freedom we are having it? Total we have 12 degrees of freedom. Correct? So with the first one, we have arrested five degrees of freedom. So how many is bending? We have other seven degrees of freedom. What are those? Positive Y. If you consider translation, it is positive Y. Positive x and z correct so if i am having one hole here i will be going to place one pin so what it will do i can't able to move the panel in x direction and z direction what is happening it is arresting this translational motion about the two axes correct so what is bending if you consider rotational all d X and Z direction is arrested. We have rotation about Y axis. So I can't be able to rotate the panel about this. So what I can do? If I place one more pin, this is the third. This is two. It will be arresting two translational motion in X and Y direction. So other one, it will be arresting the rotational movement. If I place one more pin, here it can be a slot. One side we can have hole, other side we can have hole, or we can be able to have slot. So if it is slot, what I can do? I want to arrest two degrees of freedom. So what I can do? I can place one more pin over here. So it will be arresting the rotational movement about Y axis. But still, we can able to move the panel upward. What I can do? I can make three more blocks at the top of it. So the other positive Y direction 
Mont is also getting arrested. So this is the thing. So three will be representing the trans uh, blocks. I will be placing three blocks at the bottom. What will be doing? It will be arresting degrees of uh, freedom moving downward, y direction downward. Then what will be the other thing? I can't be able to rotate the panel about x axis or z axis. If I place one pin, it will be arresting four translation motion about two axis. So it will be arresting four degrees of freedom. Third one, it will be arresting rotational. If I place one more pin over here, it will be arresting rotational movement about y axis. So what I will be doing, but as of now, we have option the panel can able to move upward. We want to if you want to arrest that, what do you want to do? You want to break one more block over above this. Got it, guys? So I will be explaining again. So if uh, three will be representing the three principal locators, which will be arresting one axial moment and four radial moments. Then we will be having round locating pin, which will be arresting four degrees of freedom above within two axial directions. Two axial directions will be arresting four axial moments. And I will be having another round locating pin, which will be arresting two degrees of freedom about axial moment. You will be arresting the rotation moment. So this is the three to one principle. Anyone have doubts in this? So this is the thing. And if you have circular pin, yeah, one more thing I want to discuss with you guys. You have a, you have four conditions. So we have a circular hole slot. Similarly, we'll be having two pins. One is circular pin or diamond pin. So if you have a circular hole, if you have circular pin, it can arrest four degrees of freedom. Circular hole. You are having a circular hole with, if you are using circular pin, you can arrest four degrees of freedom. Okay, I will be having a hole. I will be having a circular pin. What will happen? I can't be able to move it in two directions. So four degrees of freedom is arrested. I will be having a circular pin. I will be having a diamond pin. So what it will do? It will arrest only two degrees of freedom. It can't move in the particular direction, but it, if it is slot or something, it is circular, so we can be able to move in this particular direction. It is possible. So circular, circular hole with diamond pin can arrest two degrees of freedom. Next condition, circle, we have a slot, we have a circular pin. So what it will do? It will arrest one transverse once transial movement, but it can be able to move in the other direction. So slot with circular pin will arrest two degrees of freedom. Other one, we have a slot, we'll be having a diamond pin. So this will arrest all four degrees of freedom. So slot with diamond pin will arrest four degrees of freedom. Any doubt in this till now? If any, you can just comment in the chat box, please. So then we'll be having different units. So as a part of fixer, we'll be having multiple units assembled together to arrest the degrees of freedom. So what are the different units? We'll be having fixed pin unit. So as I told, we are going to place the pin. So pin is the uh, thing which is used to locate the particular component. And pin retainer is the thing which is used to hold the pin in a place. It is used to hold the pin in a particular location and it will arrest the degrees, it will arrest the rotation of the particular pin. So then we have SIMS. What is SIMS? Do you have any idea? So as we'll be having tolerance for each component, what will happen? If I want to place the pin in position, what will happen? Because of the tolerances, I may not be able to achieve the exact location. So what will happen? 
there will be some stock uh, tolerance stack up, right? So how I can able to Yeah, so I will be explaining it again at the end of session, okay? So I will be explaining with the uh, cat, okay? So if I have a pin unit, so there are two uh, pin unit is the thing where you can be able to locate the particular component in place. So I can be able to arrest the port translation movements. If I have a circular pin, I can be able to, if I have a circular hole, I can be able to arrest four degrees of freedom. What are the different components available? So one is fixed pin unit, another one will be retractable pin unit. If it is fixed pin, it is used to do, it is uh, placed at the fixed logistics location. Can't, we can't be able to retrieve the particular pin. Clear? There are different components. One is pin. Pin is used to locate the particular component. Pin retainer is used to hold the component in place. So it will not allow my pin to rotate in the particular thing. Okay? And we have sims. So we have tolerance stock up. So because of tolerance stock up, what will happen? So we want to adjust the location of the pin to the required dimension. We need to achieve that. So for that, we'll be having extra filler kind of material, which can be like uh, washers or something. Okay. So space uh, sims are used to get that dimensional accuracy. Okay. So sim usually have be having uh, thickness of five mm, and will be having sim will be having as a pack, which will be having uh, thickness. Uh, we'll be having five components, which will be having thickness of two mm, one mm and as well as 0.5 mm. We'll be having uh, 0.5 mm as two numbers, one as uh, two numbers and two as a uh, one number. So totally we'll be having a same pack, which will be having the thickness of 0. Uh, sorry, 5 mm. And we'll be having five components, which will be having thickness of 0. 0.5 mm, two numbers, one mm, two numbers, as well as two mm, one number, okay? So block is the thing which is used to support the pin retainer with the riser. Riser is used to hold the particular entire fix uh, pin unit design is the particular height at the required height. So next one, retractable pin unit. So I will be explaining you when I you need to use the fixed pin unit and when you need to use retractable pin unit with the help of the CAD yeah, or uh, annotations. Okay. So here, what I'm going to do, I am going to place the pin and the respective components with the help in the retractable cylinder. So I'm going to place the entire pin and this requirement over the rectangular cylinder. So this is a pneumatic cylinder where I'm going to place the pin. Okay, and that is mounted to the same risers. So remaining all the components will be same as it is. Instead of pin retainer, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a retractable cylinder. So where I can be able to retract the particular component in place. So guys, any idea uh, where I can use fixed pin unit, uh, where I can use retractable pin unit? I hope my screen is visible. So whiteboard is visible. So consider I will be having a particular panel. So I want to perform spot welding over this region. Okay. So what, uh, will I go for fixed pin unit or where I can go for a tail pin unit? So how I'm going to load the component? So I'm going to load downward. I will be having pin unit over here. So what I'll do, I will place the component over here. So I'll be having pin over which I will be having pin returners and the entire things over here. Okay, I will be having a blade. And I for every pin unit, I need to provide two-way simming. So I want to adjust the pin in X as well as Y direction. So what I want to do, if I have a pin unit, I need to provide two-way simming. Okay, so this everything we can able to see detail in CATIA. As of now, we can just understand the concept. So I'm going to load the component after I'm I'm going to do spot welding over these regions, over these corners. After after completing it, I'm going to unload the component in the same direction. So loading and unloading, it is taking place in the same direction, right? So here I can able to do, I can able to go with fixed pin unit. I will be having a fixed pin unit. I will be bringing the panel, keep it in position. I can use spot welding. And I can unload the panel and we can go for it. Consider I will be having two panels. One is placed vertical, another one is placed horizontal. I will be having one over here. So I'll be using one fixed pin unit over here. So I will be having a fixed pin unit here. So similarly, I will be having one more fixed pin unit over here. So after performing, I will be going to do spot welding over this region. Can I able to take take back my 
can I able to take my, my panel? So how I'm going to load the panel? This panel I'm going to load downward. This panel I'm going to do load in the inward direction. Can I, after performing the spot welding process, can I able to take out the panel? Is it possible? If I want to move upward, what will happen? This pin will not allow me to take my component outward. Clearly correct? If I want to move this direction, what will happen? This pin will not allow me to move in the other direction. So what I want to do? So in this particular cases, what I can do? The loading direction is different. I can't able to unload in the particular direction, correct? Either in this direction or, or either. So I have loaded like this. So I can't able to retrieve back like this, correct? So in the same loading direction, I can't able to unload the particular component. So what I want to do? I want to retrieve any one of my pin. So what I will be doing, I will be having a fixed pin unit. I will be retracting the pin back. After particular uh, performing the particular operation, I can take my pin back. And then I can able to unload the particular component. Okay, so if the loading direction and unloading direction is same, we can go for fixed pin unit. If loading direction is different, unloading direction is different, we can go for retractable pin unit. Clear case? So return pin unit will be having single thing. What we'll be doing after performing the particular operation, we can able to retrieve the pin back. Yeah, these are used to hold the component in place. So consider I will be having a panel. I will be want to hold the component in the thing. So I can just share my CAT screen and it will explain you in detail about the different units. Yes. So next one, rest unit. What is the rest unit will be functioning? Just used to hold the component in place. So it will be providing support only at the bottom. Yes. So this everything, I'm going to open CAT and I will be showing the different models of this for your reference. Next one, clamp unit. Clamp unit is used to hold the component, right? So what are the considerations for a clamp? It need to hold the component slightly, but it's not damage the component uh, by providing. If you are, if it is holding very tight, what will happen? There's a possibility of the panel to get deformed. What are the different? It can be able to give tend, dent, or it can be able to create wear and tear to the particular component. So that's not happen. So next one, rough locators. What is rough locators? Rough locators are used to, to guide. So I'm having a panel here. What do the rough locators do? Will guide the, so for placement of the particular thing, what do I want to do? I want to know the which orientation I want to keep the component. Rough locators are used to guide the particular uh, engineer to hold uh, for loading and unloading the particular component in place. If I'm going to load it, what will happen? It will guide the tool. So where I, which orientation I want to keep the particular panel. So this is an example of rough locators, which will be guiding the designer where I want to place the rough locators. So next one, base unit. Base unit is the one over which we are going to place all the components together. We'll be having different units, right? All the units will be joined together, placed over the base unit. Then 3D finishing. 3D finishing is the final thing in which after we completing the thing, what we want to do? We want to check for the whole nomin, whole concentrates. So I will be having two components for that the constant uh, whole center point need to be same for all the things. Then it need to have a nominal value. What I, what I want to do? So I'll be placing the component. You need to have a nominal value. It can be either 0 0.5 or it can be one. It can't be. So when I'm going to give it for messaging purpose, what I want to do? I need to have a nominal value so 0 0.5 or 0 point or one. Either we can go for 0 0.5 or one. It's not heavy value as 0 0.623, 0 0.113 like that. It's not be there. You need to have using a nominality value. Then where I'm going to do the messaging purpose, I will be messaging it with a different color. So for holes, I'll be having different standards. So I'll be giving the color to the uh, holes as per the requirements, okay? Next, I am going to uh, apply all the fastness wherever required. I want to check whether it is having class with any of the other components. And we want to rename it properly with the parts and assemblies need to be renamed as, as per the standards. Next, bill of materials will give in detail about what are the components available. As per assembly level, sub-assembly level, port wise, we'll be giving the detailed idea what are the different components available over. So, just a minute, I will just open my CAT screen and I will show you the I will show you guys the different models available.
So give me two minutes, guys. I will be opening my cat here. And I will just show you guys. Is my screen visible for everyone? So if yes, you can just type it in the chat box, guys. So this is the type of the uh, core panel, okay? Consider this is the core panel, which I'm going to uh, design the fixer for this particular core panel, okay? So for every core panel, we need to have two holes, right? As we already know, we need to have, we need to have minimum two holes. As, as well as we need to have three clamps for each of the units. So how we are going to do it? So we are going to check it accordingly. This. So first, I'm going to design a pin unit for this particular design. So as, for better visibility, I just hide the panels for your reference. So this is a clamp unit, okay? This, sorry, this is the pin unit where I will be having a pin and I want to arrest the rotation of the pin, right? So what I will be having, I will be making a cutout over here and I will be arresting the rotation of the particular pin using a pin retainer. Got it, guys? And this is the sim. So as I mentioned, for every pin unit, we will be having two-way sim. So I will be having sim on, we need to have it on two directions, which is your X and Y directions. Clear, guys? So if it is pin unit, we need to have sim along the particular direction. So what I want to do, consider I will be uh, making the panel visible. So consider I have tolerance stack up. So so I want to adjust the position of the pin. What I can do, just a minute. Any case, give me a minute. So, so there's a tolerance. Uh, so we'll be having multiple components together, right? Because of that, each will be having a tolerance value of point, uh, zero, 0.01 or something. At last, what will happen? We'll be having a tolerance stack up. Because of this, what will happen? The entire unit will be having some tolerance. So what I want to do, I want to adjust the position of the pin with respect to that, correct? So whatever be the difference in value that need to be managed with the help of the sims. So what are the different directions? So it may be having a possibility of having tolerance difference in X direction or Y direction. So what we will be doing? I will be creating, I will be having a sim pack in both X and Y direction. So we'll be having two way sim. And this is the blade which is used to support that pin return with the particular riser. So riser is used to maintain the height. It will be holding all the components of the pin unit over the base. So this is the base. So over base, you'll be having a riser. So rise with respect, uh, I will be place having a pin. I will be having a pin retainer. Then I will be having two way simming. And this is the block which will be help to mount the entire unit over the riser. Riser is a thing where it is, the base where it is going to support all the pin unit components above the base. Clear, guys? This is one of the fixed pin unit, the uh, circular pin. Okay, I will be showing how to create, create the diamond. So I will hide the panel. So here you guys can able to see it is having a diamond pin. So if I having a slot, what I can do? It will be arresting two degrees of freedom. So I will be having a circular pin. If I use diamond pin, what will happen? It may arrest. I, my panel can't be able to move in any of the directions. As of now, I have. So if I have only one pin unit, what will happen? It can't be able to move in x and y direction. But what happened? It can be able to rotate about each axis. Correct. So I want to arrest the rotation. What I will be doing? I will be having one pin unit, uh, another pin unit over here, which will be arresting my another rotational axis. Clear, guys? So how many degrees of freedom is arrested with this? Two pin units? Any idea? So if I have these two pin units, how many degrees of freedom is arrested? So translation about X and Y is arrested. Rotation about each is arrested. So what are the other degrees of freedom? How many we have? Any idea, guys? So how many rest degrees of freedom we are having? we have another six degrees of freedom, which can be arrested by using clamp units. So now we'll be having one clamp. So this is the different panel. I'm going to do spot welding over this region, correct? So what I did, so for this particular panel also, I want to arrest with respect to three to one principle. So what I want to do, each panel will be having at least two holes. 
So with that, what we can do? We can arrest the rotational degrees of freedom and translation degrees of freedom with the help of the pin unit. And the clamp unit is two-block component. So this is the rest miler and sorry, this is the clamp miler and bottom one, it will be the rest miler. And these are the different components of the clamp unit. If you guys want better visibility, I will hide the other components for better visibility. So basin it also, I will hide. So this is the hybrid, which will be having pin unit as well as the clamps. So this is the, uh, so we need to have, for clamp units, we need to have one way simming. As you already know, the panel is placed here, right? So if I have tolerance stack up, what I want to do? I want to adjust the tolerance stack up. For that, which direction I want to adjust? I want to adjust in the edge direction. So one way simming is enough for all clamp units. If it is pin unit, we need to have two way simming because we want to arrest degrees of freedom in X and Y direction. For clamp units, we want to arrest the degrees of freedom in each direction. So we're going to uh, compensate that tolerance stack up so we can have it sim in each direction. Clear guys? So I can show you the rest unit. So if it is clamp unit, it will be having clamps at the bottom as well as top. But if it is rest unit, it will be holding only at the bottom. So I will hide the clamp unit and I will show you guys. So for better visibility, I just hide the panel. So what is this? This is the rest unit which will be providing support only at the bottom. If it is clamp unit, it will be having clamp at the top as well. That's the difference. And this is the other type of clamp unit, which is called a civil clamp. So we'll be having a civil clamp, which will be convert, which can be managed with the help of the pivot. So with this help of the pivot, we can be able to rotate the panels at the required locations. Then I can be able to show base unit. This is the base unit over which all the other components have been placed. Just give me some time so I can open and show the entire fixer assembly. So this is the base unit. So over which we'll be having the bottom, we can be able to manage the height of the component. So this can be welded with the bottom. This is the base, which can be fixed with the ground surface, okay? Or which you'll be having the diff, uh, this fixer unit, which can be welded together. After completing this particular fixer, what I can do? I can move the entire fixer and I can be able to replace with the other component. This will be welded. This can be fixed with the ground surface. The bottom one, which is mentioned here, it is fixed with the ground surface. And the top one can be exchanged as per our requirement. We can use fasteners or we can be able to use welding. And if you consider the base unit, you'll be having all the, so over which we are going to place all the other units. And here we will be having a uh, trunker, which will be uh, providing the required uh, gear for the pneumatic cylinders. And this is the unit which will be supplying, this is the trunking cable, which will be explaining the path by which the gear is supplied to the pneumatic cylinders. I can make all the units visible. So for your better visibility case. So I will be having different units and I will be having pneumatic cylinders, right? For uh, pneumatic cylinders, we need to supply, uh, we need to supply air. So for supplying the air, we will be having trunked channel, which will be explaining the path by which the air supply is provided to the particular cylinder, which can be explained with the particular thing. Clear guys? So if you want, I can be able to show the other model as well for your reference. Different model. Yeah, this is another kind of fixer unit. Here also we'll be having the same. So for each panel, we need to have three clamps and two pins. Clear guys? If you guys want, I can just hide the different components and I can show you things. So this is the base unit for which they have designed the pin unit, one pin unit. So we'll be having a fixed pin unit. So I'll be hiding the panel for your reference. So it'd be having two ways simming. And we are going to represent the holes, right? As I mentioned, there will be different companies who are using different standards. We'll be using different color codes. So for through holes, we can able to use either 
blue or we can able to use cyan colors okay and for the data holes we are going to represent so i'll be having double pins as well as i'll be having fastness so for the data holes i will be representing with a different color for double pins where i'm having through holes i will be representing with different colors okay and this is a machining area so i'm going to do machining over the surface which can be represented like this clear guys so this is one pin unit if you want i can just show one clamp unit so this is the clamp unit so we will be having a clamp for clamp unit we need to have one way seaming in each direction so these are the these are called as rest miles and these are called as clamp miles then this is the clamp pump so this is the power clamp so it is the uh, closed position and this is open position similarly i can able to show civil clamp rest unit so this is the rest unit where it is used to just support the panel it is no having no other function other than that and you can able to see here so they have represented two things right so if we are having minimum we need to have three uh, holes for each component among that two can be double pins and one can be threaded hole okay and for if you are having two components at the top or surface you can go with through holes and bottom we will be going with threaded holes so we want to if you consider uh, why we are not going with threaded holes for each and every component is there any reason in fixers we want to make sure that we are uh, going with lesser material as well as bringing down the manufacturing cost as low as possible so if you are having uh, two surfaces in this topper one we will be going with through holes and bottom we will be having threaded holes so why we are having threaded holes any idea to reduce the fastness if you to reduce the number of components as well so if you want to use nuts it will be have a separate component and which will be adding additional component so you want to reduce it instead what we can do we can just go with the threaded hole at the bottom of the surface so any doubts till now so uh, clamps will be uh, ensuring the panel will not be tilted so it need to adjust the degrees of freedom and we can able to adjust the clamps so it will be having open position as well as closed position for the clamps that is possible so you guys hope you guys get some idea regarding fixes and these are the rough locators which is used to guide the placement of the locating particular component in place so which orientation i want to keep it so it's really giving the rough idea where how i need to place the particular core panel in place and here what i did for through holes we have mentioned as blue color for threaded holes we we just mentioned as yellow color and for basing surfaces we have represented in the uh, orange color okay kind of orange yeah swar so i will be explaining once again with the circular some have doubts with respect to circular pin and uh, diamond pin so i will be explaining it again i hope my screen is visible so i will be having a panel here so there is possibility of having one side circular hole other other side to have the adjustable thing they will be having a slot circular hole here we will be having a slot consider we will be having two types of pin right one is circular pin another one will be diamond pin if it is circular pin so if i have a circular hole what i will be doing i will be going for a circular pin with the same diameter if i am placing circular pin exactly here what will happen i will be having a circular hole i will be having a circular pin what it will do it will arrest four degrees of freedom so if i place one pin here what will happen i can't able to move the panel in x direction can say this is x and this is y x direction and this is y direction so what will happen i can't able to move the panel in x direction y direction but what i can there is a possibility that i can able to move this particular uh, thing with respect to z axis 
so it can able to move in the particular direction but i can't able to do translation motion so for translation movement is arrested if i have a circular hole if i be having a circular pin so four degrees of freedom is arrested is it clear as of now is it clear so second condition i will be having a circular hole excuse for the geometry so first condition circular hole with circular pin will arrest four degrees of freedom second one circular hole with a diamond pin so i will be having a circular hole i will be having a diamond pin so this is the diamond pin so what will happen now my component is free to move in x direction but it can't be able to move in y direction correct so it will be arresting two degrees of freedom but it is free to move in the other direction we are having a gap here right so what will happen if i have a circular hole if i have a diamond pin it can arrest only two degrees of freedom it is in x and y direction it is arresting only in the y direction clear so next one we are having a slot we will be having a circular pin so we are having a slot we will be having a circular pin what will happen can't able to move in y direction y direction it is arrested we can't able to move it in y direction but there is a possibility it can be moved in x direction so circular slot with circular pin will arrest only 2 degrees of freedom next slot with diamond pin so i will be having a slot i will be having a diamond pin it will be like this what will happen here it will be arresting all degrees of freedom i i will be having a slot i will be having a diamond pin with this can is it possible to move in any direction so it is arresting degrees of freedom in both x and y direction so sir slot with diamond pin will arrest four degrees of freedom i hope i have answered perfect you have any other uh, is it for clear or i want to explain it again i hope i have answered it so grippers will be developed separately and it is like a this so actually grippers are uh, designed separately and it is used to just to handle the complex okay just to, to it can be a metal uh, metal handling gripper which is just to handle the move the component from one one station to other station if it is like process gripper it is it can able to perform some operations like welding as well as some other operations like gluing or sealing any of those can be approved while we are moving the component from one station to other station is there any other doubts for you so grippers will be coming uh, grippers is also part of fixes only but it is mainly focused to move the component from one place to another and it is uh, having very lightweight component we are designing it separately so if you have any other doubts you can just uh, Drop in the chat box. I can try to answer it. How to design clamping force? So that will be based on the requirement. Okay. So how, what based on the weight of the particular component? I'm going to decide the clamping force. So how much will be the clamping force? That will be decided based on the requirement from the companies, and it will be having different standards. So we'll be having cylinders, pneumatic cylinders, which will be having forty bar, fifty, sixty bar kind of it. Okay. so it so companies will be defining their standards and they will be giving the approximate weight of the particular component okay so my fixer design will have it need to hold this much weight so what can be the required cylinder based on that we will be deciding the uh, cylinder uh, bore diameters as well as pressures everything is what are geo fixers geo fixers are used to do measure the geometry of the component we will be having the cad data so with the cad data 
so it is going to verify the component with so we'll be having uh, coordinates with each and every positions right so for the entire component we'll be getting the position of the component with respect to coordinates so you'll be having relative dimensions for each and every component right uh, we'll be having x y z coordinates so it will be comparing with the cat data and it is going to find the difference between these two okay so what is the actual cat data in cat data what will be the coordinate values in uh, real time measurement what is the uh, uh, value it is going to check with it if it is within the tolerance level it is susceptible if it is higher than the tolerance which is crossing the tolerance level we are going to rework on the particular design we are going to modify the particular post and we will be getting it so geopin actually geopin it is just to geopin will be so we'll be having a geometrical uh, location okay point where we are going to do spot welding consider i'm going to do spot welding at the particular coordinates so it will be having value of x 100 y Hundred is it ten kind of it? Okay, so if it is geo pin, what will happen? It will go to the respective person and it will be checking it. So once for uh, doing geometric inspection, we want to hold the component in place. So how we are going to place with the help of the pins? So I'm going to uh, place the component in position with the help of the geo pins, and uh, we are going to design it as per uh, as per the requirement. We need to design as per accurate dimension. If it is twenty mm uh, diameter of the hole, the pin should also be twenty mm only. But there is some considerations, manufacturing considerations. We can have some uh, tolerance added up, right? So if it is having geo pin, it can be it will be defining the geometry of the component. So it will be having lesser tolerance of 0.15 mm. But if it is refort spin, so we have we can't able to do spot welding on all the points at the same time, correct? So we want to do as batches. So first we will be trying to cover up major regions. Then we want to we can't able to hold the component. Uh, so we'll be holding the component in some places, right? So we can't be able to perform all the spots in the same time. So we'll be using respot pin, which will be performing it accordingly. Please. So if you are placing uh, this one, okay. So fixtures are used to hold the component. So we'll be uh, so consider uh, pin units are used to locate the particular component and clamp units are just used to hold the component and rest unit is used to provide the required support. So pins are positioned at the principal location, correct? So we'll be placing the pins at the required lobby. If it's considered a, you have going to develop any fixer, we'll be having at least two holes available where we are going to place the pins and that pins is going to arrest the required degrees of freedom. What is CMM? CMM is the coordinate measuring machine. So it is the automated machine which will be checking the dimension of the entire model. It will be giving the CAD data and it will be scanning the entire CAD data. So scanning the entire product and will be giving the uh, report. Which, uh, we can able to regain the particular, we can able to scan the particular model and it can give the uh, required data like what is the surfaces, what are the different surfaces available. Uh, and will be give, you can able to regenerate the entire particular model. So re, respot pin, it is respot pin. Actually, respot pin it will be different. So where I'm going to perform respotting uh, uh, spot welding at the second. Okay, so I can't able to do all spot welding at a single time. I can able to do spot welding in batches. First batch will be like first catch, first batch can be achieved with the help of the geometric. Uh, Sorry, geo spots. Second can be done with the respot spots. So respot uh, pin is different from rectangle pins. So any other queries? I hope I have answered all of it. Respot pin is different from rectangle pin. So if you are if the loading as well as unloading direction is same, you'll be going for fixed pin unit. If loading direction and un, uh, unloading direction is completely different, we'll be going for rectangle pin unit. Any other queries? Yeah, Michael. So I have answered all of the questions raised in the chat box. We can move forward okay. to the next uh, step. Sure. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Murli, for you know uh, delivering the wonderful and insightful workshop today.